Hey everyone, James Holst with In-Depth Outdoors, and you know, I've had a lot of boats uh, throughout my uh, fishing career, but this one here, Warrior 238, definitely my favorite. Uh, as soon as it was released, uh, I knew I wanted to have one. Uh, so I bought this boat from uh, Skeeter Boat Center in uh, Ramsey, Minnesota, and brought it over to this man. This is Matt Rowan, he owns uh, Big Fish uh, Encounters, and he does rigging as well and he does very complex rigging jobs. And what I was looking to have done was definitely kind of outside of the ordinary. Yeah. A lot of special requests. So uh, if you're interested, we're gonna kind of just listen in. He's gonna walk me through everything that he's done because uh, I haven't had it all explained to me yet. I had general ideas of what I wanted to see, but then the, one of the last things I told him was, I want you to rig this boat like you'd rig, if it, rig it if it was yours. That'd be quite the boat for me to have too. So it was kind of a playground. I, uh, I've been fishing and working for the last 30 years to get to this point. So you'll have one someday soon, I'm sure. But uh, th this one I'm gonna keep for quite a while. So yeah, I wanted it done right. I'm so happy to have my touch on it. Um, so we, we specialize in the big stuff and or fitting graphs and spots graphs don't fit. Um, custom rigging, uh, we spend time on it to do a good job. We label as much as we can so you, the next guy can work on it. And we are, uh, Garmin uh, Authorized Service Center. Our work is warrantied nationwide. So you, if you have a problem when you're at a tournament, you can bring it to any service center and they can take care of you on Garmin's dime. Well, that's one of the first challenges that I hit Matt with. I had two 13 inch Hummingbird Apex that I wanted to get on the dash. And that might not sound like a big deal, but there's not very many boat dashes that'll hold two of those giant units so you can i can see you got that put in place but you know we're back here in the corner let's just start at the back of the boat let's yeah, talk about a know. lot of the fun happens in the back of the boat that's mm -hmm. where we net them anyways uh i personally don't climb up front too often unless it's a beautiful day um, we have a couple of fishing stations and a trolling platform for you so we got rear tracks down riggers on top of them um, we have a fish hawk so we know how the temperatures are running and how fast we're actually moving um, next to that, we have our mapping and our sonar to go with it, um, all of which will pair to the downriggers. So we have complete uh, networking throughout. Uh, we have set up on this side a Brew City pole with Mega Live, so we can look backwards. We can see the downrigger balls and even some baits behind them. Um, we can look in front of us, and we're actually able to see how deep the fish are running before we get there and we're able to bump the downriggers down a little bit or even bring them up if we have to. Sure. Um, a lot of fun. Uh, this, a lot of times on boats, this back corner is where the electrical magic happens. Um, inside of there, we got dual batteries. Uh, we have on the run charging, uh, 36 volts up front. We have uh, 100 amp hour Norsk lithiums in there. Uh, great battery, got the Guardian app to go with it. So you're able to check where you're at how much juice is coming out and how much time you still have to run. Um, Those uh, Norsk batteries up there, this is the fourth boat they've been in. No kidding. That's... I, I just keep moving them along just to see how long they'll last. So yeah, they were I remember in... two summers ago, I think we put them through the paces out on Mille Lacs. That was a good trip. We ran them right till they stopped. <laughs> Which is a long time. <laughs> it was yes. a hot day too. So I see you've got down here at the uh, transom here, you've got two side imaging transducers, one for each side. Yep, it's never fun having to trim your motor up to look at the left side. It's even less fun taking off and realizing you forgot to trim back down. Right. Um, so we got a transducer on each side. It's fiberglass boat, so we uh, fiberglass and in-hole uh, transducer to shoot through. Uh, ideally, we get speeds all the way up to, uh, reading all the way up to about 60, 65 miles an hour. This thing's got to run. Yep. Um, networked up to the apexes at the dash. We also have uh, Mega 360 on the trolling motor. We're going to get up to that. That's kind of a little bit of a Frankenstein, big boat, big water. You need a trolling motor that'll match. So we kind of went to the drawing board there. Um, in the middle of the boat, you got your room for your rods. There is a ton of room on uh, both sides. Easy to get and fold down hatches to get in. Very simple. And they will take just, oh God, it's over 10 feet for sure. Do you recall it, the spec it, on it? I don't, but it's, it's a bit longer than the rods that I own. It so is. So we're good there. It is. For the salmon guys, you still got a lot of room for your uh, dipsy rods in here. Um, working our way up, 
the half the fun is getting the apexes to fit at the console. Most importantly with screen covers on. So we have apex 13, we have great gap between the windshield. We got a great gap between the vertical windshield strut. Um, we have over 10 large cables running through this. One of my favorite rigging tools is the Cornfield Fishing Wire Puck. It can accommodate large connectors. You can put up to a two inch hole inside of it. Um, so when you're doing large dashes or large bow mount conversions, you can fit every wire you need. Um, and there's even room for some more for you, James. I don't think I'm gonna put much more on that <laughs> dash. <laughs> um, when you get to custom, uh, sometimes you gotta get fully custom. We TIG weld aluminum here. Uh, they get the graphs where they want. You still need to be able to get your rod locker open. Um, we notched out one of the gimbal brackets here, custom. They're BBT short gimbals. And then we modified one of them that you can slip the rod locker right past. It intrudes into the walkway about four inches, but you actually have, I'm not saying a mile worth of room, but it's a big boat and I bet you just about everybody can get through there. You work your way up to the front. We got the VHF for the big water, uh, extra rod uh, track for rod holders if you're up here. Get some front lines going, bury them in the water if you need to. Um, up front is your fishing station. If you're a casting guy, this is where all the magic happens, the follows, the hook sets. We went with an Ultrek so that we can mount a live sonar directly on it. Um, it's a big boat, so we wanted a little more shaft. We added a 72 inch shaft on this, and it's a little bit of a wrestle job to get it to where you want, but you have that long trolling motor if you need it. And on most days, you just run it like a 66 inch Ultrex. Um, we have an Apex 13 at the bottom, so you have a big old map in front of you. You can still see your side imaging data in the back. Um, and then we have a 360 mounted on that Ultrex as well. So we have a full radar picture of what's happening below the surface. Uh, one of my favorite things is just knowing exactly where to cast. That's right. And I know it seems like overkill going with a 70 plus inch shaft, but I have absolutely no tolerance for the prop coming out of the water yep. on a windy day. The fish always bite when it's windy, so. And, and the longer the boat, the you know length, it adds up a 23 and a half foot boat or so. It's... Uh, so what, what it takes to do that is you have to buy a longer shaft from a Tarova and then you take the 60 inch shaft off and you swap in that longer Tarova shaft and then hopefully you can find somebody to buy the 60 inch shaft and uh, lower unit from you. Yep, so they're not cheap. That said we have a couple of bits of hardware on here. We actually went with the target lock lift assist adapter. So the actual scissor mechanism on this is from an entirely different Ultrex. Um, it's meant to lift some more weight. So 72 inch shaft, big water. We need all the assistance lifting that out of there we can get. We have uh, Live Scope Plus on the barrel of the motor. It gets pretty crowded when you have a big motor like that. So we didn't, we didn't mount it to the shaft. I personally have had pretty great luck using forward and down views directly on the barrel without interference. Um, I'm personally a fan of it. We have several guys running them with uh, zero issues. Other than that, clean wiring, troll sock, uh, 70 amp trolling motor plug. We want stuff to last you when you go out there. We don't want it to break down halfway through the season. Oh. We bring you in at the fall for a little touch up and other than that, you're ready to fish first thing next season. So those uh, trolling mo or the batteries in the back. Tell me about the, the run and gun DC yeah. to DC chargers. So there's some back there for the house battery, the starting battery, so it'll charge those up. Yep. And then so, it'll roll over to the trolling motor batteries. Exactly. And we also have a battery isolator system from, from factory on this. So battery one will charge completely and or hit a specific voltage and then battery two will charge. Um, at that point, as long as the battery one is above 80%, our trolling motor batteries will also receive a 10 amp charge at 36 volts. Um, so 10% the capacity of your motor. Now if you make a long run or even medium runs, it adds up. You very seldom are going to need to plug your charger in. 
um, I'm if loving you use that. your motor. I'm excited for it as well. Um, we actually, we covered the bases. They make one for lead, they make one for lithium. We installed both. Um, if there, if we ever sell the boat in the future, which I think James keeping this one. I'm gonna keep this one for a while. Uh, he has the option. They can choose lead batteries, they can choose lithium batteries, just tech, hook up the correct charger and everything else is functional. Like he said, we did it like he was gonna own it, except he didn't have to pay for it. <laughs> I don't want to either. <laughs> Tell me about this fancy thing. So we went with the eye troll for the kicker. Everybody likes to control their speed as good as they can. I, I feel like the eye troll offers it all in your, your hands with extreme precision. Anybody that's tried to dial in uh, speed on a remote throttle knows it's one tap for two miles an hour <laughs> and a half a tap for seven miles an hour. Right. There's nowhere in between. Eye troll lets us dial by the percentage on the throttle on the uh, Mercury kicker. So we are able to dial in that speed. It has hunt mode where it will surge through and you can set the windows at what speed. You can add a little rhythm to your baits or extra action. Um, you can add secondary steering systems for your kicker if you would like. Um, one nice thing is they got uh, pause mode or idle. Um, I and see you, you installed a button for that back here. Yeah, you hit, you hit one button and it drops it right back to pause. So when you get a big strike and you need to let up and drag's peeling, you bump that button or when the net guy's ready to scoop it, he kneels into it or hits that button, drops the RPM back up, takes the load off the fish and you can scoop it out of the water. Yeah, and you, you put it in a place where you're not likely to bump it accidentally. Yes, very much so. that was pretty Tucked slick. nice, close to something, and most net guys there on the left side of the boat, some guys go off the kicker side. I prefer to net off the left and scoop down here, hit the button right here if I need a little extra time to get it. So you're not going to see this one again until probably sometime in May. Yes. And, and when I, I bring it back, I'm going to bring the downriggers with. We can put the power ports in. I'll see kind of how I want everything set up with the trees. But I may actually have you add a Mega Live up front for perspective mode just off on a track. Yeah, we can absolutely do that. Uh, why stop, right? Well, why stop now? Nope. So perspective mode or landscape mode, depending on what you're using it broadcasts the beam left to right in a horizontal fashion. And if you actually cue that right to the trolling motor and you make that trolling motor in the middle, kind of looks like a baseball field to be honest. Nope. You can see what fish are off your right and what fish are off your left very easily. I take that same philosophy when we're out on uh, Great Lakes. I turn around and I watch my downriggers and my dipsies off to the side using the landscape mode just tipping it down until get i get to watch all those salmon that happy come up in and look and turn yep. away and, and you'd be amazed at how many look and at that point you just start working your way through the box until something happens well i need to get him out of the boat and i need to get up in there and start looking around because uh, i know he did a great job but i need to see what it's all about uh, before we go i just want to you know just point out to any you know anybody watching this that lots of guys will rig a boat for you but when you start talking about you know complex rigging uh, three four units uh, all sharing data running multiple live imaging units there's not a lot of people that know how to do it right so if you're if you're in one of those scenarios not that he doesn't do small rigging projects but in this case if you if you have something that's a little bit more complex than usual definitely look him up uh, the reason I came here was some people I really trust that have had really complex uh, rigging done just rave about how everything works At all attention the time. to detail um, I'm personally a guide I would say over half of my main customers with the boat are guides uh, their job depends on a boat that works and they, they know I feel the same way and I'm gonna make sure they can get through their shift and their customers are happy and safe thank you appreciate Very it welcome, I look Jim. forward to Thanks turning for the, the key honor.